team. Welcome to Inside the Movie Photographer with Jason Boland. Tonight, today, or wherever you are, because we've got an international lineup for five photo folio. We've got Giles Kite, Jessica Ford, Lacey Tyrell, Helen Sloan, and Rolf Kerno. Now, we've all picked out five shots. You know the drill by now. It's episode three, and uh, I'm going to bring the team in because uh, this is so much fun. Um, hi, Giles, or as I call Gilly. You can call me Giles. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I get it wrong all the time. No, because I, ta- I always joke about it. And um, and everyone's like, no, it's not. It's You can pronounce it right. It's like, no, I don't. So, um, it's okay, yeah. JB. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Thanks, so. buddy. John, so you're in the UK. Yes. Right. And then I'm going to bring in Jess. Jessica for Hi. You're, you're, in, you're in Paris, right? Or in yeah, Paris, I'm in Paris, France. This is a true international five photo folio. I'm stoked. Okay, Hi, here's one of my dear. Hey. And I'm going to bring in Sloney. Hey, Sloney. Hey, Jesse. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Oh, that background is so bohemian. Are oh, you like pretty groovy, are you? <laughs> pretty groovy. I've got this guy just here to scare people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> the piano yes badly oh, cool. <laughs> all right i'm gonna bring in rolf hi rolfie hello hi rolf you're in hi, denmark rolf. Right? i'm from denmark and right now i'm on location somewhere in uh outside then outside copenhagen this is so cool i yeah. love it oh, now where's lacy and hi lacy <laughs> Hi, gang. Hi, Lacey. Hi, Lacey. Lacey. Now, Lacey. where are you? I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, La La Land. This is so cool. And I'm in Australia. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Globe trotting crew. That's pretty cool. Are you guys looking forward to five photo folio? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it's so much fun. So what we're, what we're going to do is... um. We're going to hook straight into photos today, and um, and uh, I'm really excited. I, don't, I try not to look at your photos too much, but like I just sw- throw them up there, um, so then uh, it's all pretty fresh to me. Now, uh, and at the end, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about how the junior members and stuff like that would like to get into the industry and what your big break is. So, yeah. Giles. You're up mm. first, buddy. Surprise. Boom. Wow. I'm still scared. Uh. <laughs> this, this you know? still, still puts hairs, um, yeah, sticking up on the back of my neck when I see this uh, shot. Um, yeah, this was uh, Rogue One, which uh, most people, I think, would probably recognise, but um, maybe not. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was a childhood dream to um, shoot Mr. Vader. Um, oh. I was uh, filling in for a mate of mine, Jonathan Ollie, who did the main shoot, and uh, I did eight weeks. Yeah, eight weeks on this. And, uh, I did you yeah. eight weeks? Yeah, man, I can imagine you geeking out on this. It's um, it's such a powerful image. Well, we were, as I say, there was only five of us down the corridor that could squeeze in, and we're all about the same age, so we all pretty much looked at each other when it happened, when he came around the corner. As I say, there was, a re- I, as far as I remember, I think this was a rehearsal and, and everything was laid up and every, all the lights were set. And uh, when he came around the corner, we sort of almost looked at each other. It was like, oh my God, we're kids. We're seven years old again. And this is, this is it. We're seeing Vader for the first time. And uh, it was just awesome. It was absolutely awesome. But this was the first time you saw, yeah, yeah, you yeah, saw Vader. Yeah, he just came straight in. And um, yeah, it was just, there wasn't, as I say, everything was laid on. It was like a, it was like a theater, it was like a performance that was just laid on for us. And surprise, and there uh-huh. we were. And uh, yeah, it was just awesome. It really was. And, uh, so, yeah. I can imagine how imposing it was too, with him just there, just like wow. And you must have been like, no way. I'm got, I've got like six weeks on this gig, and I just pulled off this. Yeah, it was just, it was brilliant. It really was. We were making sure that the door was still open, that we could get out just in case of emergencies. They did come towards us, you know, those lightsabers. <laughs> <would get up. laughs> 
uh, yeah, no, it, it was it was very cool. And uh, as I say, it was eight weeks of um, just bliss, and it was just yeah, it was it was pine wood we were shooting, so it's not a million miles from where I live, so couldn't wait to get into yeah. it. So yeah, I love shooting it. I love shooting at Pinewood. It's like my favourite village. Oh, oh man! So I was so jealous when you got this job. Yeah, it, it, it was, was like that was even closer to where I live. That's about five minutes up the road in Bovingdon. And uh, really, yeah, it was just it, yeah. You could hear the explosions in the morning. So uh, we. So yeah, it was. This is Fury, and uh, yeah, this was. Uh, one of those shots where I was between, we were between scenes and uh, I was traipsing through the mud and uh, the only dry place on the film was on top of the tanks. And uh, Brad was um, possibly thinking about the next scene and I walked past and I was just saw in there and I had a Fuji X100S around my neck at the time. I was, my main workhorse was the Canon 5D at the time but uh, I had the little Fuji around my neck and uh, I saw him and uh, you know I just took a couple of shots and just walked past and that was it just didn't want to disturb him but I just thought that was it that was just such a really sort of lovely shot to get um, this marketing ended up using it uh, the only thing that I was gonna did, say this this was a one sheet wasn't it yeah and they, the marketing um, I think this was this is Sony. They did a brilliant job, and all they've done is really enhance the clouds. Everything else is pretty much as as it was shot. Um, wow! It was probably yeah. It was I was lucky to get it, so I was very chuffed. Um, do you grade? I I do grade, and I had graded very similar to this, but this is the marketing grading. So as for the um, poster, I wasn't connected to this. Um, particularly grade, but uh, yeah. my pretty much my material was graded very similar. I was very much hand in hand with the DP, just talking to him every day and just sort of going through what what was required on particular scenes. But I, I think I pretty much had a muddy filter in front of the camera every day, so everything was just mud. Um, <laughs> that two foot of mud for about three months. And uh, the other thing about this film is when I had the the meeting um, with the producers and director for the film, they did say there's one thing that you have to go and do now when, when I had when I got the film, is you've got to go to costume. And I was like, okay, what's this for? And they said, well, we're getting the ADs and costume and makeup all to wear outfits. He was like, okay, all right, what, what sort of outfit am I going to be wearing for this movie? So, uh, yeah, I ended up um, having a GI outfit for a majority of the film. Um, so it was in case, because we were shooting in fields, there were so many cameras and so many different sort of angles. And it was just in case, you know, they turned over while there were crew still in sort of um, shot. Mm -hmm. So makeup, costume, ADs, and myself and some of the grips were dressed up. And uh, I loved it. I did stink, though, because those outfits really weren't waterproof. They were, I, I was just, oh. but uh, I absolutely loved it. absolutely loved it. And, uh, yeah, we did that a lot on Mad Max too. We were mm -hmm. all war boys. Cool. It was a lot of fun. But you, hey, had, um, you had a nice heat. You had a nice temperature out there, didn't you? Oh, uh, no, it was freezing. It was because um, really? we were in Namibia and wow. it was um, on the coast. So, um, so yeah, it was really it was really quite cold. It wasn't too many, you know, super hot days. The mornings were very cold. Come on. I love this shot. This is in Corda Studios in Budapest, and uh, a lot of the capsules were up in the rafters of the stages. And the only way that I could shoot, uh, most of us all shoot with remote cameras on um, occasions, but this film really was a remote camera job. We had so many setups up, as I say, up on the higher parts of the stages for the capsules. And uh, I had my Sony strapped to the front of uh, the crane but it, it was a 3d rig so the, the actual um space is very limited and you really had to get there very quickly to get your camera on board because the vfx team had theirs the stunts had theirs so you really had to be on top of it the whole time 
uh, before the camera went up and that was it. You'd lost your camera for, you know, a good half an hour it's up there. And so it's tracking along and that's Sebastian. And Sebastian was just, as you can see, edging his way into the capsule. And uh, I just love that shot. Uh, it's yeah. a great BTS, and yeah. you know it's also a great marketing image, which they, which they can mess around with. And you know, as you know, you know the so many can walk away from green screen days, but that's where a lot of the gold comes from, eh? Yeah, we, you know, as you say, the behind the scenes material is is refreshing, and it's you know you can really get some really messy, interesting stuff, uh, lots of flair, and just the crew. That you, you know, a lot of people don't get to see. And uh, yeah. Sebastian loved the picture. He was really chuffed with it. I showed him. Hey, what remote do you use? I was using a. Oh God, what was I using on that one? I think I was using a. a tr I can't actually remember what I was using. It was a, a wireless trigger system that I was using on that one. Uh, it might have been a. I can't. I can't remember what I was using. Mm. As much as what I think that I'm like the rig man, I actually hear from the grips over in England that you are uh, you're probably the uh, camera rig king. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, <clears throat> on Fury, um, I didn't. Going back to the other picture, it reminded me of uh, I had the remote cameras on the tanks quite a bit at the time, and because uh, of the explosions and the gunfire, and we were riding the tanks. We we were strapped on the front of the tanks with all the harnesses and everything, so it was all very safe. But we had um, the remote cameras up in the front, so I wasn't going to get shot and wasn't going to be hit by any of the mud flying towards me. But there was one day, uh, a friend of mine who's the continuity on it, she said, you've been so lucky on this film, you haven't lost any of your equipment. And I said, oh, yeah, I was <laughs> quite, you know, chuffed about it. And just as she said that, the tank reversed into a pile of rubble, and in the back of the tank was one of my remote cameras. And, uh, I, it was all in slow motion. It just it went. The magic arm just snapped off. It fell down, and the track just went over. And it was in a crash box, and all I saw was the crash box doing this. <laughs> so, well, I sort of shouted to Toby, and Toby said, "Stop! Stop! Stop!" And the, all I saw was the track going over them, over the crash box. And I was so mean to laugh. Well, they stopped in time, and I pulled it out, and the crash box was disintegrated, but the camera was fine, which was a bit gutting. No upgrade, but yeah. never mind. But, uh, but, yeah, the camera was fine in the end. Cute. And my mate, Maddie. Yep, your mate. <laughs> we seem to share him, don't we? Yeah, no, yeah I've right. been sharing him too Aww. lately. He's, he's so stills friendly, isn't he? So, uh, he's wonderful. He was very helpful, and uh, this was out in Jordan. Uh, Peter, Peter Manning and myself we both shared this job. Peter was um, started, and then I took over after Christmas. And yeah, so we, we had great fun on it. But, uh, yeah, as I say, this is out in Jordan, and uh, there was we had to be very careful because, of course, we didn't want to walk on the sand because well, it's Mars, so we didn't want to leave our footprints behind and uh, I'd seen the reflection during the take and I, you know, everybody had to stand back while they were filming with Matt for this particular shot because the visor was picking up everything. So I waited and then as soon as the take had finished I ran across, sort of tiptoeing across and uh, asked Matt could you keep the helmet on and the helmets, you know, they could breathe-ish but they were getting very hot so they didn't really want to keep them on too long which I didn't particularly blame them for not wanting to keep them on but matt was very obliging i said look matt just stay there just don't move because the reflections were real everything in that shot is as is it was on the day and i said just stay there because i saw the cliff and i just said this just this really works very well and uh reeled off a couple of shots and yeah that ended up as one of the marketing shots as well so i was very chuffed with that so of course it's is that beautiful <laughs> What lens is it? it? Looks like fifty-eight or something like that. Not a. It was as as my, like an eighty-five, right? It was a twenty-four to seventy. It's my Canon. It was a Canon at the time, so that's a five D Mark Four with a twenty-four to seventy on it. Um, so yeah, somewhere in that realm. Yeah. So, yeah, it probably is about fifty, I guess, at that particular shot angle there. 
But yeah, he's got the best eyes. Very chuffed with that shot. Um, oh, it was a brilliant job. Really loved it. Oh, uh, and it's a great movie too. It's just yeah. you know, mm. it's so cool. <laughs> what? The? I hear there's a story behind this too, right? There is a, a story big behind story. it. I will try not to. Im well, I'm going to talk about it, but it's going to embarrass. Anyway, whatever. So yeah, this is in early on in my career. This is about 2000. I don't know about 2004. Uh, we were in the Isle of Man, and this is a film called The Dark with Sean Bean and uh, Marie Bello, and uh, it's a horror film, and it has sheep in it. And we're all scared of sheep, of course. The uh, sheep are very similar to you know sharks, jaws, but uh, yeah. So this is. Um, <laughs> This is, <clears throat> this is the Isle of Man, and uh, it's supposed to be Wales, but anyway, it's the Isle of Man. So we're on this cliff, and uh, we had to recreate a, a cliff that was further away from, uh, not near the edge, basically, because we didn't want to lose any sheep. Uh, so they built this fake cliff, and they had a camera from behind and a camera from underneath, as you can see in the shot. Now, I, I come from a farming background, originally and we had sheep and we had cattle and horses and uh I, you know I, the sheep were there and at the time there wasn't this little ramp or platform in the front of the um fake cliff so you know i went over to the first ad and i was a little bit concerned for these delicate little sheep that you know i didn't want them to you know hold themselves coming off this um edge so i, I you know went over to the first ad with his friend and he comes from a farming background as well and i said you know are, are they going to be okay and he said well, you know, i'm sure they'll be all right and he sort of looked at me he said do you want me to put a platform there and i said yeah, maybe so he got the grips to go and get the platform and they put the platform there and um you know the farm <laughs> was top, of the hill, top of the hill with the sheep and then the sheep were going through costume and makeup and you know great <laughs> So they're all getting, you know, limbered up at the top of the hill and uh, they came charging down and they flew over the ramp. And I sort of looked at the first and he sort of looked at me, silly boy. And uh, so they flew over, they, they were loving it. And then they came round and then they did it again. <laughs> there was no hesitation. It was like the Grand National. They just love, look at their look, lovely gates. They're just performing. They're just like, this was, this was brilliant for them. Anyway, on the second text, on the second way around, they decided to use the platform as a trampette. And so from the behind, you suddenly saw these sheep going down over the cliff edge and then shooting up. So they almost <laughs> they were like rockets. They were going out of the frame from above, which didn't quite work in, in the film, but they were flying sheep. They were supposed to be committing suicide like lemmings. But, but anyway, yeah. So he looked at me, it was like Go away, Giles. No, don't don't talk to me. So yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll keep quiet next time. Oh my god, that's a classic story. Yeah, <laughs> See, this is what I love about photo photo folio because these stories come out that no one ever gets to hear. And yeah, um, I, I've I've learned my lesson uh, not to mention anything about uh, yeah my concerns of flying sheep now. So uh, <laughs> our, our sheep wouldn't have done that. They would have hesitated. I mean, these are mountain sheep, so yeah. Ours were old Suffolk, so they would have just gone. So, uh, <laughs> oh, we go. my gosh. Hey, Giles, Giles, yes. Gillis. Very good. <laughs> I got it all covered there, right? Yep. <laughs> so um, any advice for um, people that want to, you know, to get into Watch the industry and do what we do? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't, don't give any advice to a first AD very important um but this was early on in my career so yeah um but no he's i'd love to meet up with him again um yes um just talk to as many people in the industry as much as possible about you know email them phone them just talk to as many people as possible and most people are very sort of um helpful i've always been very helpful when people email me i'm always sort of there to sort of try and give as much advice as possible and uh you know starting out working you know doing the odd theater job and low budget movie you know doing freebies when i started and you know that was that's where, where i got into the industry and yeah. uh, i was very lucky i assisted quite a few stills photographers 
early on in my career. That was making cups of tea and coffee. Um, but yeah, I was just past. Yeah, it's about grafting, huh? Mm -hmm. I was. It's a bit. It's a bit more difficult now because you know being on set is much more restrictive. You know, you can't just sort of come on to set as a you know an extra body. Um, but at the time, it was yeah a little bit more flexible, should we say? Yeah, it seems to depend on um, you know the size of the film these days. Like it's it's really hard getting people on, but. You know, there's not there's no shortcuts anyway. It's, but it's um it's you know, I always say about you know trying to do student films and stuff like that and and um, yeah, you know just get out so, there. You gain so much experience, and uh, you know it's it's very difficult because you're not earning any money. But uh, it's <laughs> just working as a team, and I think that's so important that you aren't you aren't number one. You work as a team, you work as a whole entity, you, work, you craft together and you, you're making a product together. Yes, you're producing stills, but you can't go in and just force your way in. Oh, I'm very important, I'm going to take stills. You've got to work, you've got to, you've got to work with everybody else and you've got to be that team player. And, uh, you know, if you help one person, they help you and, you know, that's the way it goes. And, uh, but we all know that. Well, no, but that's a good point because I think that a lot of photographers that are making a transition from another area of photography, they struggle when they come onto a film set because they, they've been so used to it being all about them because, you know, they're the director, they're the photographer, they're, the, they're everything on a still set. But when they get onto a film set, it's um, a bit of a shock and they're the ones that uh, I find uh, don't kind of make it. Yeah, you, you've, got to, you've got to play the game. And, uh... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but you have to understand the game before you play the game. Yeah. And if, if I can jump in, mm. uh, um, I often hear photographers coming from portraits or cooking or whatever, and they just arrive thinking that the, the job is doing mainly behind the scenes and just going around and snapping and seeing what you and, and shooting what you see and uh, for me that's not the main part of our job so and and then of course you have to understand that you're that you're working with the electrics and with everyone and 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 uh, everyone and yep. if you if you if you're not good with or happy with some part of the crew you're not going to work at all and so very often I've heard French photographers say, oh, I did one movie and then I went away because I was treated so badly. I wonder why they were treated so badly. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, that's good because you you won from that. Okay, Gillis, they were, uh, they were epic. I love the, the sheep story. Okay, uh, who's up next? Oh, Jessica, take it away. Where is this, Jessica? This is a picture of Kristen Stewart mm -hmm. uh, in a film called Equals. And I was called to do the part in Singapore. They shot uh, the first part in Japan and they were doing, yeah, in Japan, and they were doing all the inside studio, all the inside scenes together in Singapore, but we had two days outdoors and this was in the botanical garden of Singapore, which is one of the most amazing places I've seen. And the camera on that shot was actually following her, where are my hands, following her in the back. They were, so they were walking behind, they were filming from behind. And I just found that place where I, so this is a behind the scenes, kind of I would call it it's not and they, they didn't frame that and uh, and I think she's just amazing and I actually picked this picture also because the the um, the subject of the movie was uh, was um, a relation uh, 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 it's futuristic and it's in a moment in time where people can't talk or can't kiss or can't touch and she and Nicholas Hult actually do fall in love 
because their emotions are killed away in that movie. It's a movie directed by Drake Doremus. Doremus? Doremus? Drake. And, uh, and well, and I love this actress. She was amazing to work with. And um, a pleasure. And I love this picture. So I turned it into black and white two days ago. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh. It is. It's a gorgeous image. And um, I, I love the fact that, you, you know, what you brought up, that it's the cameras behind. And, you know, us as still photographers, you know, we've got to seep in the cracks like uh, like liquid and and to find these shots because, you know, for a back shot doesn't really mean a great deal to us. But, you know, I mean, this is just, this is such a powerful image. It's so cool. And uh, and she's just, she's just part of the nature. She's nature, we're nature. And, I'm very into nature at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's so cool. Oh, yeah. Come on. So this is Scott Eastwood in a car movie called Overdrive uh, that was directed by Antonio Negre and shot in Marseille in south of France. And I picked this one because the others aren't action and I love doing action movies, just like you, Jason, and like you, Giles, so like you, Helen, and <laughs> maybe all of us. And, uh, and what I like in action movies is, I mean, in fighting and it's there we were, I think we were shooting at least two cameras, but I think three. And it was on a Zodiac boat, on the water, uh, in the port. And that's also the thing of trying to find your own little spot where you can shoot the image and have something that's telling a story. But then I like to go and, as you all must, uh, try and find the graceful uh, movement in something that's really violent or can be really yeah. violent. So, and plus, we, I love shooting in low light uh, So the, and sodium. I just love sodium. So that's why I chose this one. And Scott was pretty incredible with his... Uh, I don't know if any of you have worked with him, but he... Yeah. In, he, was, anyhow, um, yeah? he was in Fury for a period of time. Uh, nice yeah. guy. Nice guy, and especially very impressive on his um, his work on his physical stuff. That was really he was really super professional and doing it and not hurting anyone. And you know, sometimes some people are gonna hit the wrong way, or and he was just like super professional on it. So I really like I like this picture. And he's cool. devastatingly handsome. He is. Girls like him. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know, right? I, I um, I did a film with him in China. He's like, he was really cool. I used to take him all hiking up this big mountain every weekend. All he looks there. really like his dad there too. That's True. amazing. Oh, I love foreground in Gorgeous. in um portraits. What's this from? So this is Idris Elba in another action movie, actually. But I chose this one because. I wanted to maybe talk about this with you, but the, the foreground is actually giving some action and movement to a portrait, which is Idris Elba in this movie called The Take. Well, it was called Basti Day and they changed the title and went to, to The Take. And it's just, in fact, the foreground is all the electrics um, things. And I think, uh, I think the bottom line must be, uh, um, a pulley, a white, uh, yeah, poly bounce board. So I think it was actually a tiny little poly, exactly, a tiny little one, and using this this lens and this, <laughs> this aperture, uh, it it creates some movement. In fact, in something that's absolutely not moving at the time, because I suppose there they were. I recall they were going off for a drive. And I can't follow on those, of course. What were you? He's um, amazing to photograph, Idris, isn't he? Yeah, and he at the time he had the most amazing perfume. 
So he, he, would just, he would just, one day I went, I said, Idris, you smell so lovely. <laughs> so he gave me the name, but I forgot the name of this thing. And he was like, oh, you can find it in any little store. And uh, no, he's, he's just so adorable. So, I mean, we're lucky sometimes, huh? I think it was called Egyptian musk or something like that. But it wasn't a, it wasn't a, 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 a well-known, I mean, a Christian Dior or whatever brand. It's something you find in little stores and local places. So I wouldn't mind having the name. Ask him, please. It was amazing. I can, I, so I can he, smell he him as Egyptian poor. musk right now. <laughs> Can you, because you were just standing and suddenly the sense came and I, oh, Idris is back on set. <laughs> that was that <laughs> I love it. Oh, he's an amazing man. He's fantastic. Oh, yeah. And talking of amazing men and awesome portraits, hello. Very cool. So this, this was, um, I loved working with him. Uh, it was on a movie called The Family. Uh, directed by Luc Besson and in French called Malavita or in Europe and um, we were at that was at the moment where I was doing the photo shoot for the poster photo shoot and uh, well I can tell the story and in fact um, so I had to shoot Michelle Pfeiffer, um, Diana Egren, John DiLeo, the two Diana and John were playing the two children of uh, Robert De Niro and Michelle Pfeiffer. And so I'd already, sh so that was on a gray screen. And, uh, and so I'd already shot the, um, the three first actors and, uh, and Robert was coming in last. And, um, and I, well, tell you the story. Uh, and so he comes in and he says, oh, you're taking the pictures, great, super. And so I take him to the spot and I tell him, okay, they want bad guy and good guy, so should we do da da da? And there he says, yeah, but you know, I don't like posing. He doesn't like posing, or at least he didn't like posing. And um, and there he looks over my shoulder and everybody was there. I mean, producers, distributors, the artists artistic the people who came from the states everyone and there he looked at them and he said look um we're just going to do a few close-ups and uh and i'm gone and sure. there i went like wow because uh how i mean in my head we've been shooting the other three how can this mix if it's portraits and blah blah so this is impossible so i turned around and i said to everyone okay i want everybody out so i will just keep um hair makeup and costumes in a little corner and the, and the gaffer and that's it and so the the key grip was jess are you sure you don't want me to stay for the seat or stuff no 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 i'll call you if i need you and so i actually chucked everyone out and awesome. i had forgotten which is and i'd forgotten that we were actually shooting in a music studio well, I hadn't really noted in my head, but we were, so there was this kind of um, mirror window, but in fact, they all went the other side and they could see everything that was happening in there. And I had no idea. And I'd actually put my lenses on the side of that window and said, and so I go back to, to, to Robert and he smiles and I start taking a few pictures of close-ups and, um, and there he says, how long do you need? I said, well, we planned on half an hour. How about 20 minutes would be fine? He says, okay, let's do it. And from then, he, he did everything. He did everything standing up. We brought the chair in. He was a bit low. I put my coat underneath his, underneath the pillow. And, uh, and he did everything. And at the end, I'd, been, I'd forgotten to do a close-up with a different shirt. He was ready to leave. He put the shirt back on, came back. We did those close-ups. We had everything. And then he left. And then uh, the people from Relativity Media came in and said, uh, you're a miracle photographer. He's never done a photo shoot for a poster. And there I said, but how come? I mean, what do you mean? And they yes. said, well, usually he does a few close-ups. And then we have to use a body double 
with uh, with his clothes, and we photoshopped all that. And uh, and I said, why didn't you tell me? And they said, well, why, why would we tell you? <laughs> And so, and so there it is. And I just love this picture. And thank you, Robert, for this beautiful present because it was just amazing to be able to work with him a long time. Actually, during the movie, we were doing quite a few. It wasn't always blimp pictures, but we had to have a few post things because Besson's got a rather symmetrical way of shooting in the center of image. And so, so voilà. So that's the story of this. Portrait. It's very strong, guys. Very cool. It is right. It is right, Giles. And and I mean, like, it goes to show, um, you know, your heart as a photographer that you get the trust, and you know, that's the most important thing for the on-set photographers having the trust of the cast. And and for you to pull that off is, uh, I'm not going to take it all the way off, but I would. Oh, hats off. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Bravo. Great light too. Yeah. Oh, one of my favorite films. Oh yeah. Cool. Yeah. So in your last five photo folio, you had an elevator picture because I had a look at that one the, uh, yes. a few days ago. This is another elevator picture. So this is Lucy, uh, Luc Besson also. And uh, we were shooting in uh, Taiwan, in Taipei. Um, and that day, uh, so that was a stead shot, steady cam shot. She was being pulled in the whole, through the whole hotel. Uh, the the steady cam was following her, following them. And then they put her in that elevator and the doors would close. And I was, of course, not you could see everything so I was out and I was looking on the monitor watching on the monitor and I thought this was a, an amazing picture and, uh, and so I went to see Luc and uh, Besson and I asked him if I could do one of those end of scene pictures and he said no I don't think it's an interesting one at that point and then I went to see the first AD and I said don't you think it would be a good one and so the first AD did go and see Luke again and then then Luke said okay well she's tired which was true she's got sore feet she's exhausted you go and see her and see if it works and so I went see Scarlett and I she, she was sitting down and I said do you mind coming but just doing the inside the elevator and we don't need your heels put your your comfortable shoes on and uh, and so she said yeah and uh, and so I set up all the people like that what was kind of the action but then like you look there and you look there and and there we are and it finally became one of the iconic pictures of, of this movie so so that's to say also to the young photographers still photographers it's not because people say no that it has to obviously be no, but then sometimes people don't like you trying to do a bit more than what they would like you to do. <laughs> so it's a kind of a complicated deal to do. But I'm happy with this pic about this picture. Uh, and you know, Luc Besson is my dream director to work for. I mean, The Big Blue. Um, I mean, I was, I, mean, I must have only been 18 or something when that came out and you know, him and Mila Jovovich was like, yeah. But this yeah. is a great shot. The fifth great element, shot. I think, is rather um, rather cool. That fight scene in Fifth Element between the opera singer and, oh, my gosh, that, the, that cut is probably the best cut fight scene I think I've ever seen in my life. That's cool. Just, yeah. just such a brilliant film. I love it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Oh, Jessica, really beautiful. Thank you, Helen. No, it's cool. Thank you. Hey, Jess, what's your advice to, I mean, like um, getting in, I mean, because you're in in Paris and it's um, it's quite a closed shop there. I mean, I've only ever done, I think, one, one gig there or two maybe. Um, but only, you know, only portions. What's your advice for the for the uh, young ones getting into the 
Well, well I'm there. usually I'm usually rather quite negative about that because um, I'm not the one who's going to say, "Oh yeah, come along, it's great." Just it's. I think that number one, I think people think our job is not what it is. It's like, oh wow, you work with stars. It's so glamorous. It's so amazing. And in fact, it's not that glamorous. It's. I think it's thrilling. I love doing it, but it's emotionally thrilling. I love working with crews, and but then all the glamorous side is not what I think we see because we see that the actors are normal people, and uh, and we see them in their reality. And the other thing is, I d well, you work on the long run. I'm lucky in France because I've been working on quite a few American projects so, or, or English or British when they come over. Um, but in France, it's less and less days of shoot uh, for, uh, for a movie. So it's not the same as when I started like 15 years, 16 or 17 years ago. Most of the movies, you do the whole thing. So the thing I, I want, to, the point I want to get to is that maybe you cannot earn your life you're living with stills photography and uh, I, I mean at the beginning and before you have a cv and an amazing I, I mean it takes 10 years to build at least so mm -hmm. if during those 10 years you think you're going to live with stills photographies at least in france you're not and many of them, because I'm also part here, we're all members of the American uh, SMPSP, the American Stills Photographers um, Society. And I'm also part of the French one. And uh, in France, there are quite a few of our best photographers who are not working enough and who are actually stopping or, I mean, you can't do one movie uh, a year and shoot only 15 days on that movie then you stop so that's so so what i really would like to say to young photographers is uh, is uh, find yourself another job too i mean the time to build up and then shoot as much as you can and create the most incredible portfolio you can with many many different things and of course go and work on short films and and with schools and students but that's not what's going to get you the jobs with the productions immediately that's very interesting the different regions and i didn't realize that it was um so prevalent over there you know where europe can be so busy yet um yet paris or france isn't as much you know it seems as you're saying that it's um uh, although but American films busy. and that come through. It, it is busy, but it's just that a lot of, we, we do shoot a lot, but then productions uh, in the States or in, yeah, in the States, let's say, you, uh, they put a lot of money into selling a movie. And um, in France, we have more, we'll call it independent movies. And there, uh, a lot of the young producers uh, have been saying in the last eight years, oh, we'll get screen grabs or we'll, we'll get things from the camera. And then they do one or two movies like that and then they change their mind because they realize that in fact, number one, they don't have the quality. Then they've got the, 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 the how do you call it in English? The, the movement. And then they'll have only what is shot by the camera. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if the director has decided to do close up, close up, close up scene and one where they're walking from the back, well, we'll just have, they'll just get portraits. That's it. You don't sell it. And when we're there, we're going to do something with those three actors, which are portrait, portrait, and we're maybe going to do a wide or something that works with that scene and create it the way we, I would sell the movie with this scene. And um, so that's changing. And then, uh, so meaning that movies with smaller budgets are going to cut out the photographer, like, oh, we don't need that. And there's kind of a big, um, a big, like, 
who's paying for it? Should it be the distributor or the photographer? And a few still photographers recently have been to see the distributors to say, okay, why don't you add some more money on top of the thing? Because the producer, he wants to produce his movie. That's it. And the selling part for him is not part of his, his um, job. So that's a bit complicated. And then with the series, uh, well, I suppose you've noted that um, sometimes they, and which is a bit logical also, it's going to be like 16 weeks of shooting for a series. But then if that series is always happening in the same setup, they don't really need us all the time. And then they're going to say, okay, so you're working like two days or three days guaranteed a week. And then sometimes it goes to lower. So do you want to stay around to do one day a week for a month? It's just four days of work. Yeah, I hope now that the, um, that more and more young producers or distributors are realizing, because I did speak with a young distributor um, about a month ago, and he was saying, oh, I just discovered, he's, he's, he's 28 or 30, and he's actually working on incredible movies. And he was like saying, wow, I just realized how amazing and important it is to have stills photography, because we can play around, we can sell the movie, we can try different ways of selling this movie. We can be inspired and um, and if they just take what comes out from the camera they don't get that i love your holiday photos too just quietly my instagram yeah <laughs> <laughs> when you're on well, holiday it's, not, it's like it's oh where is she now <laughs> well actually i did spend quite a time quite a, uh, some time in bali in indonesia mm -hmm. but i was not on holiday all the time i was actually doing a, a personal project about that that I haven't shown yet um, I mean on on internet uh, a lot about um, Hindu cremation in 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 Bali wow. so well, when you get that up let's have you back on with pleasure I actually nearly picked one to put in this selection and then I was like oh no I want to put this one in or that one so so that was kind of kind of intense to be working on that i was doing a when uh, you know I've, i don't know if you've seen that but i've done this series with mr c and mr l that's personal work and i was doing it mr b over there but then with the lights in indonesia and a few different other things it's not working as well maybe as the other two so i'm not sure where. and i was also doing this cremation thing and that was because I met this man who took me first to a little uh, ceremony for a baby, and they often actually invite tourists over and uh, to do. And then uh, next day there was a wedding, or no, next day was a cremation, and then that was kind of incredible because we were actually sitting. He he was a quite famous person over there. I, I found out later, and uh, or powerful. And we were sitting somewhere and suddenly they bring out the body from the room, which was behind my back. And they take the body uh, just a few meters further. And he says, oh, you take your photos because I'd asked if I could bring my camera, uh, which was actually a crappy camera because I was going on holiday. So I thought, oh, I'm not taking a camera. I took the worst thing I hate. And uh, and um, and they and then he says, OK. You take your pictures and I'm going to sit over there. And then I look at him and I say, do you mean I really can take pictures? I'm, I mean, of this dead person and any pictures? And he, yeah, yeah, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And it was just amazing to be able to, to be, everybody was, I mean, nobody was pushing me away. I'm not going to say they were welcoming me because they were grieving and so they were in their thing. But then, yeah, when I needed to move around or do things, they would give me the space. And um, and it was magnificent. And then that later, people said when I showed those pictures uh, in France, they said, 
I thought you were, you were taking pictures of a real dead body. And I said, yeah, but maybe, maybe it is because I've taken pictures of so many false dead bodies in movies. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I was just, I was just working. And, um, and then, um, and it was so beautiful and it's such a, a magnificent way of, of washing the body, of flowering, of, of covering of time and so many symbols and things and um and then after that they take the body to be burnt so that's quite impressive and then I, they took me to a lot of different ceremonies of that type and so i've got a big um i think i could do a big book about that but it, it's it was fascinating and beautiful and um and so then i did also take little pictures of my iphone that i put on the instagram Jess, just love all your stories. Some such beautiful images there. Right, so Lacey, you're up. Boom. Yeah, you, and, you and Sloaney have a bit of a, um, a circus background, right? We do indeed, and I can't wait to discuss that in more depth someday. Absolutely. But I, wa I, I wanted to show this at least one circus picture because I like to say that I met the circus before I met the movie business. And I, um, I was in graduate school and uh, doing a lot of mixed media sort of conceptual artwork. But then I met this particular circus called the Culpepper and Merriweather Circus. And it's like a tiny one ring big top show that travels around the Western states. And I got to photograph them in California and started this project. So while I'm in grad school, I'm doing artwork and circus. And then I'm like, how am I going to make a living as an artist? And so I ended up doing an independent study with the one and only Phil Bray. And because um, he, I was in, in school in Berkeley and he lived in Berkeley. And I had learned that there was a still photographer on every movie set. And so we started a dialogue and I went to visit him on my on my very first movie set and it was a robin williams movie and as soon as i got there i was like i saw the tents and the trailers and the performers and the working guys and i was like this is just like the circus and so i just sort of the i was smitten instantly by the film business and the sort of collaborative nature of all these people coming together to put on a show just like the circus from the film set so my project, the the project is called the Passing Ring, and it's wasn't meant to be a twenty five year project, but it's here, here it is, still ongoing. Twenty five year pro, oh that is so wow. cool. So you're still shooting the circus? Yeah, the same one. I've missed probably in the, so I started. I met them in nineteen ninety six. Yeah. And um, I've probably missed. I'm missing twenty this year, um, but I probably missed three seasons the whole time and the longest stretch of time that i've spent with them is five weeks and are um, you doing a book that's like a whole other conversation sorry yeah i i, I want to join the the conversation too if you have a because i've got a, a circus background too so if you we could do really? a three girls thing about that yeah 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 I, I would be so into that that would mean so much yeah, to yeah. me can i, I like host I it yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. right. You have to dress up <laughs> like a microbot, though. You all have to be in costume, though. <laughs> oh. So the one thing about this image, I would say, in particular, it's from last year. And, um, you know, it's like quintessential decisive moment, you know. And, and we, we have to deal with this on the movie set all the time, like getting all of the choreography and the moments, the expressions, the motions to, to be captured in one frame is certainly challenging and I was pretty happy with this particular picture so I wanted to share it's so cool it's like a great BTS but it's not BTS because it's circus so it's like what everyone sees it's very cool yeah thank you it's, choosing five pictures is super hard but I went with pictures that I could actually tell a little tale about and um, there we are 
Everybody's are you guys dead. Are you guys like me that every photograph that you take, Sloney and I have had this conversation before, but every photograph you take, like you're looking at, at Tom there, that you remember something else from that day, not necessarily what when you shot this photograph, but, you know, it might be a conversation you had with one of the grips or what you had for lunch, just something really weird. Of course. Totally. Yeah, of course. We see, we see our photographs totally differently than anybody else. We watch a movie differently than anybody else. You know, that like yeah. we'll never be able to watch a film and experience it like the cinema audience. It's just, I don't know if it's better or if, like people say, doesn't it ruin it? But I don't know. It's just a different experience. But yeah. I watch, and we I watch know. other people's films in still frames. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, they do that. <laughs> yeah. And only and we know back. all the backstory. Yes. Isn't that the truth? So what's the story um, with that? Well, so this is from A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. And um, I just had, I had to talk about this picture because this was the very first day, the very first hour that I ever met Tom Hanks in my entire life and I had to do this picture and um he is a dream but just to back up you know this was going to be a first look kind of picture or um because they were worried that the paparazzi would get a a look of him in Mr. Rogers outfit before we did because we were filming for three weeks prior and he came in for his last makeup hair and makeup wardrobe test but we were on location shooting and they, they knew we wanted to do this picture while we we're on location. We had to do it at base camp. And um, so, they, you know, this was in the ether for a few weeks. But as the week, as the days were getting closer, um, there was a lot of, we all had a lot of ideas and there were a lot of cooks in the kitchen, but there wasn't necessarily a recipe. <laughs> and um, so the day before this is gonna happen, we were shooting at the same location. So the base camp was the same. So I went down to scope out the base camp and I knew basically in base camp, which was a parking lot or in his trailer <laughs> and it was going to be raining. And I was like, oh, no. and this is my first time ever meeting the one and only Tom Hanks. So I'm, you know, trying to get it under control. I scope out the trailer so nicely. One of the drivers became my model, my stand in. And so we went around base camp and I found like five different scenarios that, that would be acceptable for me, given the conditions, um, inside the trailer and out. But so, they, and they promised, Tom's trailer wasn't there yet, but they promised it was gonna be just like the one that was there. And I wanted to do some pictures inside. And so I was doing all my tests, and then I'm like, okay, I'm happy with this. It'll, it'll, it is what it is, but it'll work. And so the day of, I go down to the, to the set, I mean, to the base camp set, and um, Tom is still in hair and makeup. And so I'm looking at the trailer and all this, everything is all set up for him. But I'm looking at the trailer and I'm like, this isn't like the one from yesterday. And I was gonna do some bounce fill flash inside with daylight, like a mixture of things. And, um, oh my gosh. And so anyway, my, uh, thankfully my Sony photo person was in town with me, we were in Pittsburgh. And he was there, and so we um, got went into the trailer to do some last-minute tests before Tom came. And um, so I'm testing, bouncing. I'm just like, it didn't look terrible, but it wasn't the same as yesterday. So I needed to tweak. And it's super hot, super hot and muggy. And I'm like starting to sweat. And I'm like looking around at the where the flash is going. I'm like, what's happening? Thinking I still had like 15 minutes. And then suddenly, so Matt's standing in. I'm there doing my pictures and suddenly we hear this, oh, hello. Huh. And I turn and there's Tom Hanks. We are in his trailer <laughs> and he comes in and he's like, oh, hello. And I'm like, oh, Tom, <laughs> hi. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I said, hi, I'm Lacey. I'm, I'm, he's like, oh, are you our unit photographer? And I was like, yes. And I'm, I'm so sorry I didn't expect you to come in so soon. And I'm sorry, you know, we can leave. And he's like, no, no, no problem. I'll just go over here and change. And I was like, are you sure you don't mind? And um, he's like, no, no, no. So he's changing into his Mr. Rogers uh, wardrobe 
in at the far end of the trailer. I'm still here looking at Matt like, oh my God, are we supposed to leave? What do we do? And uh, he came out and there was Mr. Rogers. And it was like two icons in one. And I'm in the trailer with him. And it was the first time in my whole life ever meeting him. It was, I guess, a real experience. And um, then I ended up having about um, probably 45 minutes with him in the trailer and out. And like, there's so many more elements to the story, but that it was just a, it was sort of a, one of those career moments, I guess you could say. And he was he's, a dream. Um, and that whole movie yeah, was a dream. He's one of the nicest guys on the planet. On my, <laughs> on my first day with him, I was, uh, I was hiding in this spot trying to get a shot of him walking through. It was on Captain Phillips and he's walking through the um, engine room. And, you know, I'm out of out of shot, but just out of shot. And he was meant to continue walking down the, down the um, walkway. And instead he's just, he's come to where I was and he's like stopped here. And I'm like, got my camera up and I'm like, uh, yeah, sorry about that boss. And he's like, no, no, Jason, don't worry. It's cool. It's fine. I don't even see you. And I'm like, oh, thank God. But he is, he really is one of those guys. It's like he would um, keep the, my son was only really young on that film. And, you know, at the airport, he'd play with him and keep him entertained. And it was so funny. I, got, I, I, I don't want to take it up, but I'll tell you a quick story. So yeah. it was obviously, um, you know, Toy Story was one of my kids' favorite shows. Oh. And we were at dinner one night and my son kept on like looking over and it's like, he was like totally confused. It's like, I was like, what buddy? He goes, I don't know, daddy. It's like, oh, it's Woody. You know, that's Woody, right? And he's like, Woody? And then so Tom did the, did Woody for him and it was like, it was, but the kid was just like, every time he spoke. <laughs> that's um, so sweet. Yeah, that's him though, isn't it, eh? What a great guy. Oh, this is wow. such a powerful uh, shot. I love that picture of yours. Lovely. So, oh, Lacey. Um, so this picture is obviously Matthew McConaughey from True Detective. And this was another um, one of those, uh, it was posed. Um, but it was a situation where we were filming in this abandoned warehouse and he was, it was steady cam shot all day long. We were moving through these really amazing rooms. And in this scene, when he passes through this room, he's actually, his back's to the camera and he's shining a flashlight. And um, when we were doing sort of the walkthrough, um, I had our steady cam operator, we were all in that room and I, I had the steady cam operator stand in that position and I took, um, what I thought was kind of an amazing picture of, of Chris McGuire, amazing steady cam operator. And I was like, oh my gosh, I should really do this with Matthew. And um, so Matthew in this show, True Detective, this is season one, um, he, he was very in character all the time. And it was a pretty, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's a pretty intense show and intense character. I loved it. it yeah. And um so um, at some point um, through Chris, he was trying to be helpful through a conversation with Chris and the first AD, we were like, let's try to get a picture with Matthew at the end of this. And um, so any, anyhow, long story short, we, the, the scene is sort of over and he, Matthew starts to walk down the stairs and he, we pass each other. And he was still so in his zone that I just didn't, I didn't feel, I didn't want to bring it up basically. And um, I passed him and I, in my head, I was like, oh no, there goes the opportunity. What am I going to do? Like, but I just, I was afraid basically. And a second later he turned around and he was like, oh, hey, do you want to do that picture? And I was just like, yes, please. And so he came back into the room with me and we did it and uh, did a few different versions and so that's just it's one of those moments that I, I was going to let it slip even and I was going to regret it forever. But luckily, him being the true pro, he knew that it could be a good opportunity and he was willing. So There's lovely lighting on him. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. And just the framing, you know, it's um, 
because he you know I, I love it that you know he he was in the in the show he's fighting his demons and it just like it says everything that 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 frame that's you know that's yeah. what we're there for isn't it you know that one frame that tells the entire story of a character yeah and even um you know part of our job is is to sort of bring um to see the whole picture no pun intended but to see like we we have to do our own thing sometimes you know not not we have to follow our own path and maybe the camera's path will lead us somewhere but then we'll we'll bring our own perspective to it and just you know like you did jessica in that picture with kristen stewart you know sometimes we have to go to a different angle or do a little something with the actor later and move them and sometimes it works <laughs> yeah well it makes us relevant you know i mean like it, it showed this is one of the reasons why i wanted to do these too because it you know, you're telling the story behind it. You're showing a single frame that tells a, a an image. Uh, you know that that sells an entire production, and um, yeah. you don't do that without stills photographers. It's as simple as that. Yeah. It's like oh, I love this. Love it. Love it. What do we got next? Oh, I, I just <laughs> who doesn't love BTS? I mean, I mean okay. Yeah. So you don't get this. You don't get these without a still photographer. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, you went away for a second. Um, I know this just this, this makes me happy. This picture makes me happy. This show makes me happy. It was from um, a Showtime show called I'm Dying Up Here. And I worked on two seasons of it. And it was set in the 70s comedy scene in LA. And um, it just, yeah, I'm just, uh, the 70s are very seductive to me. And so it was, it was super fun. And this was actually a scene, they recreated that show Soul Train. And this is one of the dancers and this is me, another amazing steady cam operator, Ben Verhost. And um, it's just so happy. It is. So what's that another... <laughs> No, I love it. I love, I just love BTS. For me, I don't know what you guys are like, but when I first started, I didn't do that many BTS. I mean, I just do what I thought what was needed. But now I treat it like my landscapes, and I really love yeah. a great behind the scenes shot, you know. And yes. and you and you Me know, too. as much as it's happening in front of you more than any other image on a film set, you only walk away with you know three to five great ones from a from an entire production too, which is really weird, don't you think? BTS. Yeah. 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 I, I, mine's, about, mine's about 50 50. is it oh. yeah i shoot a lot of bts too but to get the ones that really can i feel like stand alone as sort of almost art uh yeah that i don't know yeah they're, they're, yeah i'm like you Lacey. I, don't get, I don't um the ones that i truly love from an image i might walk away from you know five images from a whole, whole film um, yeah, it depends. But I concentrate on them a lot more now. But, yeah, because yeah. I feel yeah, like so. there's the, the the making of there are a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of pictures that uh, illustrate the making of that literally are documentary, and then there's some that transcend to a different place. I think. Oh my gosh! No, look at that! Boom! This is one of the most powerful I shots I've ever seen. I just love this shot. Like, you have no idea. Aww. What movie is this? That from? means this is from True Detective. And oh, believe know. it or not, it's a it's a BTS picture. That's the director, Carrie Fukunaga, on the left. And yeah. Arif, who was on True Detective, one of our PAs, but he's he and Carrie knew each other from, I believe, London, where they studied capoeira, the Brazilian, I think. Brazilian dance form. Wow. And so this we were on, this was the final week of True Detective and we were in, this is the finale uh, set, the, the set of the Yellow King. And it was, it was sort of, we were all coming to the end of a long few months and it was, it was sort of a rough, uh, everybody worked super hard on that show. And this is our last week and um, everyone's a little haggard and just in between takes, uh, Carrie and Arif were, we were all sort of in with the Yellow King and I knew that they had a history together and so I wanted to take a photograph of them together. 
and quite literally they were just like they said in their 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 code language let's do a whatever kind of move this is and suddenly literally they like levitated <laughs> off the ground and i was kind of blown away i have to tell you it's very cool it's but so it's cool carrie would love that he's and such a nice guy he's such a nice guy and what a true visionary talent and um I mean, just so graceful, the two of them. I think Arif might be doing stunts now. <laughs> I think he'd probably be pretty good at it if that's um, that was his path. But but yeah, so this was, again, another in-between moments. Um, you know. <laughs> you see any just, way. <laughs> well, this is different. Yeah, no, this is a di <laughs> yeah, different one. But I think it's to the point before of, you know, us building trust and when we're there deep in the trenches with everybody, you know, so many different kinds of moments, whether it's with actors or directors or any other crew member, we, you know, we are all the family. And that's really the, one of the elements of the film business and the circus too, that I love the most is this being part of a, a family and a, collaborative group of disparate individuals you know we're all in it together well there's your circus skills right there and and um and yeah that's good advice too and and you know i was going to ask you what your uh what your advice to anyone is and um do you want to elaborate on on what you absolutely um i mean you guys some of you guys have already mentioned a little bit but i feel like First is reaching out to people in the business is, is huge. And for me, you know, working with Phil Bray, um, he would come to my art studio in Oakland <laughs> and he helped translate, you know, my circus work and other kinds of sort of documentary and portrait work. He tr helped me translate that portfolio into the movie still language. And, um, he, I mean, he really got me going. And then moving here, Susie Hanover is also who she got me my first job. And she, I'd met with her through, I met, I met her through an art gallery and um, we just stayed in touch and she took me under her wing and she called me, this is 20 years, 20 plus years ago. And she said, there's a movie, it's $75 a day. You have to do it. And that was my first movie in LA and literally everything from there, um, you know, if I track it all back, somehow it all goes back to the circus, honestly, but really it's, so networking is huge, but then also coming to the set with this team player, you're, you're part of a family attitude and it's not all about us. And, and we have to really know the dance and, um, you know, I played lacrosse through college and I really feel like being part of a team sport really help to inform how I move through the world and through, yeah, really through the world or on a set even, you know, it's just, you've got to be aware of everybody else's space and how they're moving and they're, how the dolly's moving, how the focus puller's moving, you know, and figure out a way to slip in there gracefully. So dog. yeah, so, you know, the dancing, team player attitude and, and just, you know, half of our job really is psychology, you know, and being good with all of what I just said, but personalities too. Right. Yeah. 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 And I, 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 like you too, I, every now and again, I get confused with um, the real person and when they're in character and, and uh, it, it is, it's, um, that's a powerful actor though, when they, when they can, you know, make you feel it from the other side. Yeah. Good stuff, guys. Well, can I just say one more thing? That was, an, um, I had never experienced the method acting um, before, and it was definitely disorienting at first. Um, but wow, what a, it was just such a powerful performance to, to watch Matthews to watch and be up close with. It was kind of mind blowing, but it, it was, it was definitely, um, it was disorienting. Um, because normally if I have a good rapport with an actor, I'll feel comfortable asking to do something. Not always. We have to, that's, we have to pick our battles, <laughs> but when they're so in character, I feel I'm more inclined to just let them do their thing. But sometimes you just have to read people, I guess. 
disorienting. That that's a really good way of putting it. Actually, I'd never thought about it like that. That's um, that's that's just for really... me. It was the first time, I guess. Yeah. I think Matthew and I had like three or four, three for sure, maybe four conversations as like Matthew and Lacey that whole time. Yeah. Wow. That's you amazing. know, he was really like in it. It's amazing. Yeah. Great stories, Lace. Great images and uh, really good advice. Okay, team, that was uh, episode one of uh, Five Photo Folio with uh, Giles Kai, Jessica Ford, Lacey Terrell, Helen Sloan, Rolf Kono, and uh, me as your host. So if you can, be great if you could subscribe and do the bell so you're notified for episode two. All right, cheers.